Good morning and thank you for joining us. Today's webinar is on the New Atomics XYZ Multi-Matrix Purge and Trap System and Jay Grebholtz, our VOC Product Line Manager, will be presenting. We will be taking questions, so feel free to submit those throughout and they will be addressed at the end of the presentation. Okay, Jake, I'm turning it over to you. Excellent. Thank you, Shelley. Uh, hello, everyone. Thanks for joining us today. Uh, like Shelley said, Jake Rebholtz, the VOC Product Line Manager here. And let's go ahead and jump right into it. Maybe. Let's see if I can get my presentation in advance. There we go. Excellent. Okay, just a quick overview of the topics we're going to cover today. I'm going to start with a brief introduction of Purge and Trap. Uh, just to make sure everyone's on the same page with some of the terminology we'll be discussing. But the real meat and potatoes of the presentation today will be the new Atomics XYZ. Uh, we're very excited about this new product, so we'll go over some of the new features uh, that differentiate it from the old Atomics, but also that will differentiate it from, from the market. Uh, some really exciting features that make this a really excellent product. Uh, and then last but not least, we'll talk about some of our application support and the ways that Teledyne Techmar are here to support you, our customer. And then last but not least, we'll cover any questions at the end. <clears throat> okay, so what is Purge and Trap? Uh, Purge and Trap is essentially in a story of equilibriums or disequilibriums. So most of the time we're looking at samples that are either liquid or solid in nature, and we'll have organic compounds within them that prefer to be in the gaseous phase, and, or hence are volatile. So what we look to do is move those compounds from the sample, whether it's liquid or solid, into the gas phase, where we can then concentrate them on a trap and send them to a GC. Uh, and this differs from headspace, which is also a very popular technique for VOCs, in that headspace is looking for an equilibrium to be reached. So we'll have a sealed container that has either our liquid or our solid sample and then has a, an amount of headspace and we give it time. Often you'll apply heat, uh, maybe mixing or shaking of the sample to help move those volatiles from the sample to the gaseous headspace uh, where we'll then take a subsample of that headspace and analyze it. But in purge and trap, what we're doing is we're constantly sweeping that headspace away so we always have a, an equal a gradient of higher concentration in the sample and lower concentration in the headspace. And so that allows us to get greater sensitivity than what we would see in a strictly uh, sealed equilibrium scenario like static headspace. Okay, uh, so what are some of the things that affect the efficiency of, of purge and trap? Uh, the things that affect the purge efficiency are going to be, uh, most of them are going to be the chemical nature of the compounds of interest. So uh, things such as the vapor pressure of the compound of interest, the solubility of the compound of interest in our sample, whether that's liquid or solid. Uh, but there are other chemical parameters that, that affect the purge efficiency that we can actually change. And that one good example would be the temperature of the sample. So we can heat the sample to help drive compounds from the liquid phase to the gaseous phase or from the solid sample into the gaseous phase. Uh, we can also control other parameters of the purge, such as the volume of gas that we use to purge. So the longer we continue to sweep that headspace away, the longer we keep that gradient of high to low concentration, the more volatiles we can extract. Also, if we're talking about a liquid sample, the way we introduce those bubbles uh, so if we introduce smaller bubbles and more of them, there's more surface area for that liquid gas interaction to occur, and we can have a more efficient purge. Um, sometimes that's not advantageous. Uh, so in the case of samples that have a lot of sediments or sludges that can clog the frit, we don't want to use a frit because that can cause carryover and contamination. So then we would go with a fritless sparger, for instance, that would give larger bubbles, uh, so we wouldn't get as good a purge efficiency. So then we may look at another parameter like temperature. Anyway, so some of these parameters that control purge efficiency, we, we can control through the instrumentation, through the hardware. Uh, and those are the things that, that we design around. So how can we improve our purge efficiency? How can we improve the chromatography that we deliver uh, as the final output for the customer? 
So those are the things that we keep in the back of our mind as we de design our instruments. And then here's just a very simple uh, diagram of what a purge and trap actually looks like, how it works. And I think it'll be good enough for our purposes today. But essentially we have our, our sample in this case would be a liquid is in the sparger. We run our purge gas through. Uh, we use a six port valve, but there's a multi-port valve that controls the flows. Um, we direct that gas flow to the trap where we collect and concentrate those uh, target compounds. And then when it's time to desorb them to the GC, we rotate our valve and then we put the carrier gas of the GC actually in line with that trap. We heat the trap to release the compounds of interest and then the carrier gas sweeps them out of the trap and into the GC where they're separated and detected. Okay, so it's a basic overview of, of what the di uh, how the instruments are plumbed, uh, how they work, but I think it gives a good idea of the basic premise. So let's move into the Teledyne Tecmar Atomics XYZ. Uh, very excited, this is our latest, newest generation uh, multi-matrix auto sampler concentrator combined system. Uh, it's also the smallest concentrator and soil auto sampler solution available today. Uh, so we'll talk a little bit about how we got it so small because uh, there's some exciting new technologies in here that have allowed us to really shrink that footprint. Uh, we have faster cycle time thanks to improved trap cooling and improved moisture control that allows us to shorten some of the method parameters that we used to historically use to help control moisture. Uh, and we've also simplified the routine maintenance and troubleshooting that's necessary on this system. Uh, and again, that's through some of these new design features and technologies that we've built into the, into the XYZ. Okay, so what are, what are the features that make all this possible? Well, first and foremost, uh, it's an XYZ platform. So by shifting away from our moving carousel design uh, to an XYZ platform, we can get the same number of samples and a sm much smaller footprint, essentially. Uh, so by moving the vials from a fixed location to the needle station, it significantly reduces the footprint of the instrument. Uh, so we're very excited about that. And it actually has led to the instrument getting five inches narrower, so it takes up five inches less bench space while actually growing a few positions, but essentially maintaining that 80 positions. Uh, so now we're at 84 positions while still having full soil in vial purge capabilities, water capabilities, dilution capabilities, and uh, methanol extraction capabilities. So we've not taken away any features of the instrument. Uh, still does everything that it used to do and more while having a smaller footprint. And again, because it's a combined auto sampler and concentrator system, it has the shortest purge return line of any soil auto sampler on the market. Uh, because we fixed that configuration of where the needle is in relationship to our valve oven, we can keep that, that gas return line uh, around about 12 inches or so from the needle to where it enters the heated zone of the valve oven. And so what that means is it's easier to keep a uniform temperature on that return line. Uh, it's easier to keep it hot. Uh, so there's gonna be less contamination, less carryover because that pathway is gonna stay nice and hot. Uh, there's fewer opportunities for leaks. Uh, if, if a heater dies, uh, in this case, we're using that pathway is heated by the soil valve heater and then heated by the valve oven itself. So it's two heaters that we would have anyway. We don't throw in the complexity of a third transfer line heater uh, like some other models do. And if you do end up in a situation where you have bad contamination and the system needs to be rebuilt, having that shorter pathway and a simpler pathway means fewer components that need to be replaced and means a lower cost in that type of maintenance uh, should it ever prove to be necessary. Okay, moving on to other features of the system. Again, like I said, we've kept all of the same features that the Atomics had, but I think they're worth touching on again. So we still have the dilutions capability come standard on every Atomics XYZ model, and that's thanks to the 25 mil syringe that's included. Uh, it's not an upcharge. It's not a, uh, it, it comes as standard kit on every single instrument. And so that gives the ability to do dilutions 
anywhere from 1 to 2 all the way up to 1 to 100. And those are programmable through the schedule. We'll talk about schedule building a little later in the presentation. But dilutions are selectable within the schedule itself. They're not a separate method. So you can load one method and then decide whether or not to dilute samples depending on where they fall in your schedule. And it's independent. You can, you can choose to dilute one sample and then not dilute the next. You have full flexibility in that, in that capability. Uh, we also have an integrated mixer for in-vial mixing. So whether you're looking at an in-vial soil purge or a methanol extraction method, uh, if you add a stir bar to the vial itself, we have an onboard mixer that can be, uh, can be enabled and then stir that sample to help improve that purge efficiency. So again, that's going back to some of those parameters that we can control to help improve the purge. Uh, we also have an integrated sample heater for the vial. So when doing an in-vial purge, the sample cup has a built-in heater that can help improve that purge as well. Uh, additionally, speaking about soil and methanol extraction sampling, we have the patented three-stage needle. And so what our three-stage needle allows us to do is we can withdraw our water samples from vials, we can do our in-vial purging, and we can do our methanol extraction all from one sample station. So by keeping all that in one station, it's going to reduce cost. It means we have only one sample elevator instead of needing two sample elevators. Uh, it reduces costs from the standpoint of needles. There's one needle instead of two. Uh, it really helps make the system simpler and smaller uh, while still giving the full capability of a liquid, a soil, and a methanol extraction capable system. Uh, another thing that we offer as a standard feature is three internal standard positions. Uh, so that comes, again, that's standard on every instrument. It's not an upgrade. It's not something that you have to pay for. Uh, it uses the same technology, the same type of injectors as the atomics. And so what that means is we offer 1, 2, 5, 10, and 20 microliter programmable injections. Those can be changed for any, any line of the schedule, and you can use any combination of those injections from any combination of the three standard injectors for any given sample. So again, a lot of flexibility here as far as allowing you, the customer, to, to run your system the way that you want and that fits your needs. Uh, when doing in-vial purging of soils, we can add the standards into the vial as long as you allow the system to add some DI water to the sample. Uh, so we can actually transfer internal standards into the vial. Uh, and then same with methanol extraction. So if you are running a methanol extraction method, we can add not only internal standards into that vial if you choose, but also a matrix spike. So if you want to check the efficiency of the extraction, that can be added into the vial before the extraction is done. Uh, and that comes from position three. So in the case of running methanol methods, that position three is designated for that, that matrix spike. And then again, because it's the same technology as what we use in the Atomics and the Aquatech 100, this system offers zero waste. <clears throat> so once the lines are primed, if you inject five microliters of standard, it uses only five microliters, unlike other systems where uh, a sample loop is employed. You, you want to overfill that loop to make sure that you get it completely full of standard and don't have any bubbles. That generates waste. Uh, so standards are very expensive. Purge and trap grade methanol is very expensive. So it's important to us that our system not generate unnecessary waste. Just like the current Atomics, the Atomics XYZ also offers uh, vial chilling. So the system is capable of chilling down to 10 degrees C or less. Uh, so fully compliant with EPA method 524.3 in the chilling capabilities. Uh, just like the old Atomics and the, and the Aquatech 100, this system also requires a refrigerator bath or recirculating bath. Um, it uses the same bath or the same, the same type of bath that the, that the old Atomics and the Aquatech 100 uses. Uh, so you don't necessarily need to upgrade your bath uh, if you decide to purchase a new Atomics XYZ. 
but you will need one in order to take advantage of the vial chilling. Uh, and then again, pointing out that that is an option that, so that it, that would be an upgrade from the base model. Uh, additional options include foam sensing and elimination. So we offer a foam eliminator model that has the anti-foam capabilities built in. And then through the configuration of the software, you can determine whether or not to add anti-foamer or not. Uh, and then you have some options as far as if the system is unable to control foam, whether that one sample is aborted and the schedule moves on, or the entire schedule is aborted. Uh, so in the case of, for instance, if all of your samples come from a similar source and one foams, you have a high confidence that they'll all foam, you might want to just go ahead and abort that schedule and then deal with that foaming some other way, like through dilution. Uh, give you the flexibility to make those decisions. Uh, if if you don't want to use the chemical defoaming agent, but you still like the idea of having that protection of the foam sensing, the foam sensor itself is also available as a as an option that can be added to any instrument, and then that'll give you the foam sensing capabilities, which, uh, in my personal opinion, I think is really inexpensive insurance against having a sample foam into your pathway. Um, I highly recommend the foam sensor for, for virtually any application, uh, unless you have a really high confidence that you're not going to have the types of samples that will foam. Uh, it's just very good inexpensive insurance to employ. Uh, and then last but not least, we have an optional glassware sparger heater, uh, so that will allow you to heat your liquid samples on the front of the instrument, uh, to, again, to help improve uh, purge efficiency should it be necessary. Okay, so the Atomics XYZ really is a single solution for a variety of problems or a variety of methods. So from a, from a water method side uh, for the liquid purge, this system is fully compliant for US EPA 8260 B and C. Uh, it's good for 82, or, uh, excuse me, US EPA 624. Uh, for drinking water methods, it works for 524.2. 0.3 and 0.4. So we have the nitrogen purge capabilities if you're looking at using 524.4. Uh, you can have the chilling capabilities if you're looking to run 524.3 and 4. Uh, and then we have a 25 mil sparger available if you want to use a larger volume and you're running 524.2. So it really is a nice system for any of those methods. Uh, we can also run Massachusetts VPH and GRO type methods. Uh, and then from a solid standpoint, again, this is the only system on the market that is designed to fully automate both low-level soils by in vial purge or EPA method 5035. Uh, and then also the high level with the methanol extraction that is described under 5035. So we're the only system on the market that automates that process. Uh, so it's a really nice feature uh, if, if you're interested in it or if you run a lot of methanol extraction type samples, uh, it can be nice to automate that process. Okay, so what are some of the specific changes that we've made to the Atomics XYZ that have allowed it to be smaller, uh, faster, and give better, uh, a drier results? Uh, so first, let's start with the layout of the internal components. So we've really simplified the trap box, both in how we get to it and how we cool the traps. So that's gonna lead to simpler and quicker maintenance of your, your especially your regular maintenance tasks, such as replacing analytical traps. Uh, but it's also gonna help with shrinking that footprint and then also reducing runtime. Uh, we've also redesigned our solenoid valve manifold scheme, and that, more than anything, has really helped, in addition with the XYZ platform, has really helped to shrink the size of the instrument. And I'll show you some pictures of what that looks like, and it's, it's really impressive how much smaller that manifold area has gotten and how that's really allowed that footprint to come down. Uh, and then last but not least, we've added a fully integrated glassware surround that's going to protect the sparger and the internal standards from impact, uh, whether that's an errant broom handle, things of that nature, uh, gonna, gonna help protect those zones so that they don't get damaged uh, as you move about and work in your labs. Okay, 
So from a from an analytical standpoint, one of the nice big features is that we've really reduced the the amount of time it takes to cool that trap from bake back to standby so we can start the next sample. And this is one of the new features of the Lumen that we've carried forward into the Atomics XYZ. Uh, so we're very excited about it with the Lumen, and now we're really excited to be able to incorporate that into the Atomics XYZ. Uh, and basically what that looks like is a dedicated ducting system that's pulling the cooling air from outside the instrument. So we're using significantly cooler lab air to cool the trap than air being pulled from within the chassis where we have power supplies and heated zones that are increasing the temperature of that air in the chassis. So obviously if we're using cooler air, it's going to cool the trap faster. And we've been able to reduce that cooling time by 22% or more over the, the old atomics system. Uh, but we've stuck with the proven reliability of the trap heating portion, uh, which is the nichrome wire heater that we've used in the stratum, the atomics, and the lumen. It was also important to us to keep both that heater and the traps consistent across those products so that if you do have more than one of our products in your lab, you're not forced to stock different consumables. So that was another thing that we took into consideration. Okay, so trap access on the old atomics required uh, the user to open the valve oven. So you had to get in here to the oven uh, and then you had to remove the trap door and there was a set of trap baffles that helped to isolate the analytical trap from the condensate trap. And then there was a piece of insulation up here in the valve oven that had to be removed in order to gain access to the nuts and to replace your trap. Now with the Atomics XYZ, it's a simple matter of opening a door. So you loosen up the thumb screw here, pull the door open, and now you're into your trap box. So it's much simpler, there's fewer components to remove. Uh, the moisture control has been moved out of the oven, out of the trap box itself. So we no longer need the baffles to help keep those zones at different temperatures. Uh, it's just a simpler, cleaner layout now. And so again, you can see where you have this dedicated duct that's forcing air in from outside instead of pulling it from within the chassis. Uh, still sticking with that same U-shaped trap and then getting easier access to our fittings from within the trap box without having to directly open the valve oven. Still obviously always recommend that you cool the oven uh, because that heat will transfer from those fittings down into these nuts, uh, but you don't have to take the time, extra time and effort to get that oven open just to do something as simple as replacing a trap. And so here we can see that these nuts are right here. And then like I mentioned, uh, it's very important to us to make sure that we use the same trap, both because we like the U-shape for its ability to reduce the path length and keep both ends of the fittings kind of in a similar heated zone. But also, as I mentioned, it just simplifies consumable stocking. So if you currently have an old style Atomics in your lab and you're looking to add another and you're really interested in the Atomics XYZ, again, you can keep one or two U-shaped traps and you know that they'll fit either instrument uh, rather than having to stock two different types of traps, which can be cumbersome and costly. Okay. The other big change, really big change for the Atomics XYZ over the previous model, I've mentioned a couple times now, is that valve manifold. So, done a couple things. Not only does it really shrunk the size of the manifold, so that really shrinks the footprint, but we've also moved to a solid, one single solid manifold for all of the valves. And what that's allowed us to do is just like with the Lumen, uh, any connection that was simply linking one valve to another is now a drilled port within that manifold. So that means fewer plumbing connections that can potentially leak, uh, and it means fewer connections that need to be made as, far, as part of the uh, replacement process or troubleshooting process. There's just fewer locations for leaks to occur. So it's more robust, uh, it's quicker and easier for us to assemble, and it's easier to troubleshoot because you have fewer locations for leaks to occur. So if we look at the old Atomics, we have this large plate. This thing is over 12 inches from side to side. These valves are kind of spread out. 
And this would be an example of one of those connections that I'm talking about, where it's simply a piece of tubing that just connects one valve to another. So in this connection, not only do you have the O-rings that attach this mini manifold to each valve, but then you also have the nuts and ferrules that connect this little loop of tubing. And so if that tubing were to get pinched uh, or crushed while you're in here doing other maintenance tasks, or if those fittings were connected improperly or developed a leak, those would all be sources for restrictions and, and leaks and other types of headaches that would then need to be addressed. So in the new design, we can see that all the valves are attached on the underside of this block and all the plumbing connections come in on the top. And so this is much, much smaller. We're talking maybe six or eight inches across now instead of 12 inches. So it fits into a much more compact location. We were able to bring the pressure regulator into this manifold. So again, now all of the gas and liquid uh, connections are in one unified location, and including the internal standard injectors are also on this block. So it brings all that stuff into one unified location, so that means shorter plumbing uh, lengths because we're not running from multiple sections of the instrument, fewer connections because more of those connections are now internal ports to the manifold, so fewer opportunities for leaks. Uh, really makes for a nice, a nice system. Okay. And then last but not least, the, um, the final improvement from the Lumen as far as hardware that has migrated into the Atomics XYZ would be the moisture control system. Uh, so just like with the Lumen, we're, we have an improved system that transfers less water. So that means you're going to have better GC chromatography, both in quieter baselines, a smaller waterfront, so less interference of your early compounds, uh, but also reduces the amount of GCMS spec maintenance that's required. So with less water going into the mass spec, you're going to have fewer uh, vacuum issues. So you're going to see fewer spikes in your vacuum. Uh, you should not need to clean the sources frequently. Again, that's also highly dependent on the types of samples you're running, but a reduction in water should help reduce the amount of source cleaning. Uh, should also extend column life, uh, may help with inlet maintenance, things of that nature. You're going to do all of those types of maintenance procedures less frequently because you're putting less water into the system. And then, again, depending on the type of method you're running, uh, you will likely see a reduction in the amount of dry purge you need, which is also going to add to help shorten those uh, cycle times. So especially if we're not heating your sample, so you're not bumping up the amount of water you're producing, uh, that reduction in moisture, uh, like we've shown with the lumen, could allow for the reduction or even outright elimination of dry purge. Uh, but again, like I said, that's, that's highly method and, uh, and application specific. Okay. So just like with the lumen, we've seen a reduction of up to 60% or more water removed over the old, the old atomics. And like I say, that's highly dependent on other method parameters, whether we're doing in-vial purge and whether we're doing uh, uh, liquid purge on the sparger and whether or not we're heating the sample. But regardless of what method parameters you're using, we will, this system will remove more water uh, than, than the old system. Okay, and so here's an example of an overlay of atomics blank with an atomics XYZ. And we can see here that in a typical uh, two minute desorb, the moisture front on the atomics can extend out as far as four minutes, depending on, on how much water is being controlled by the dry purge. Whereas the atomics XYZ under the exact same circumstances puts less water into the GC. Uh, but again, we can see that we still have nice chromatography for both water and soil side. So it's a nice system, uh, really brings in all of those nice features from the lumen as far as moisture management and purge efficiency and chromatography improvements. Those have now migrated into the Atomics XYZ. So that far and away is the thing that I'm most excited about with this system. And then on a much less exciting note, uh, the glassware surround. So we have this nice little door now that protects the internal standards as well as the glassware. Swings open on a hinge, so it still gives you nice access to the sparger 
enter the internal standard vessels for making any glassware changes or refilling internal standards. Uh, the hinge, just like the lumen glassware shield, the hinge is keyed. Uh, so you can simply lift up and pull out and it comes off. So if you're doing a more extended uh, process such as replacing your drain line to go from a 5 mil sparger to a 25 mil sparger and you just want a little easier access to work in there, that can come off easily and without the use of tools. Uh, so it just makes it a little a little nicer for, for doing more involved work. Or if you have this, uh, if you have the XYZ set hard up against the GC or another piece of equipment that doesn't really give you a lot of room to swing that door open, Again, it lifts off relatively easily, uh, so it just makes it easier to, to get to those internal standards in that sparger. Hardware changes weren't the only thing we did, though. Uh, we also did a full revamp of the Atomics TechLink to the Atomics XYZ TechLink. So this borrows the platform that we introduced with the Lumen. So it's going to have all those same great features, being fully touchscreen compatible. It's a streamlined and more intuitive layout, so it's a little quicker and easier to get to the functions that you need. Uh, but it still has all the same features. So you can still do everything that you used to be able to do with the old Atomics TechLink. It's just a little cleaner and simpler looking in the Atomics XYZ. And then just like with the Lumen, the Atomics XYZ is controlled by USB instead of RS-232. And so that means you don't need to use converters or any type of dongles, um, it's increasingly rare to get standard off-the-shelf PCs with RS-232 COM ports. Uh, so we recognize that just like everyone else, and so that's a big driver for us to move to USB connection. So here's what that software platform actually looks like. Uh, again, just like with the Lumen, the status window is free-floating. Uh, and can be pinned to stay open even when the rest of the software is minimized. Uh, and so what that really allows you to do is declutter your screen and then you're only seeing the part that you really care about, which is your status. So what are my set points for my various temperatures and flows? Am I reaching those or not? What me method am I running? And then if we have a schedule loaded, it's gonna tell us the schedule and what line of that schedule we're on. And then we always have our status here that's going to give us uh, what what mode we're in and whether or not there's any errors occurring at that time. As we dive into the, um, or I guess I should go back here just briefly and point out that in this main home screen view, we just have these four simple buttons down here. So we have the method button if you want to develop a method, schedules if you want to develop a schedule, and then tools is really going to capture all those other maintenance and troubleshooting configuration, uh, those types of, of features that you don't use on a regular basis, um, but they're still quick and easy to get to when you need them. And then there's always the help button from here that gets you to the full help menu. Excuse me. And then in various other windows, uh, as you're developing methods or if you dig into the tools and you run into trouble, um, Windows will have a Windows-specific help button that links you straight to that topic in the help file. So it saves you some time doing digging and, and searching for uh, specific help topics when you run into trouble. Okay, so for method development, uh, when we first click on the method button, you're going to get another pop-up window here that's going to ask you what kind of method. So you can develop a water method, a soil method, or a methanol extraction method. Uh, Comes with default methods pre-installed for all three of those uh, purge techniques. So those come installed, and for most users, that's going to be perfectly fine. That's going to work most of the time for most people. But if you need to make changes to your method because you're having application issues or you have a certain SOP you're following and, and that's all uh, preordained how you need to run your system, it's really quick and easy to, to modify your methods. So we break the method into several several tabs here for the different stages of the purge. Uh, and then if you click in each value for each parameter, we can give a short description over here, a minimum value that's acceptable, a maximum value that's acceptable, and a default value. 
so as you're making changes, not only does it give you a quick description of what that parameter is so you know what you're actually changing, what it does, uh, but it gives you an idea of the range you need to stay within. And as you make changes, if you start to get things start to not work so well, and you know, where did we start? Well, you always have that default. That's a good starting point um, if you're ever trying to make adjustments from a customized method. From a schedule standpoint, again, it's very similar to the Lumen and the old Atomics TechLink scheduling capabilities. We can arrow down to add lines, uh, select a different method for each line of the schedule. The internal standards are drop down selection, selection boxes here, same with the Lucians. So we can choose a different volume for each standard, for each line. We can choose a different dilution ratio for each line. All of this can be done independently. It's all touchscreen compatible. So if you have a touchscreen computer, you can literally, instead of taking your mouse and your clicker, you, can, you won't see me do it, even though I'm doing it here like a dork, you can actually touch your screen to highlight that cell and then select the parameters that you want. Uh, so again, a nice feature. Most labs probably don't have touch screens right now, but we see that's where the, the PC market is headed generally. And so we wanted to build that feature in to have it available. Uh, last but not least, we'll go over the tool screen here. And just like with Illumin, we tried to lay it out in a very functional and intuitive manner. So the things that you're going to do most frequently, like priming standards after changing them, priming the DI rinse and blank waters, uh, priming the methanol for the methanol extraction, those all have dedicated buttons. And then we get into some of these commands here that are also dedicated buttons, such as running a leak check, uh, the go to bake. So if you install a new trap, for instance, and you want to condition it, you can click go to bake or if you have contamination issues you wanna clean up, you can just simply go to bake instead of loading a method and running a schedule line. Same with go to desorb. It can be a nice uh, troubleshooting option available to you. That'll step it straight into desorb to see if your contamination, for instance, is in the trap or in your liquid handling pathway. Uh, so those commands can be helpful on a somewhat routine basis, so they also have dedicated buttons uh, but then as we start to move into the things that we're going to do much less frequently, like making configuration adjustments or the way the instrument interacts with TechLink, uh, playing with the, the XYZ arm, so calibrating the arm or moving vials around or firing certain valves to make sure that they're working correctly, all of those are going to fall over here in the system and the diagnostics. So those are things we don't use as frequently, but again, it's, it's well, well laid out. Once you get in there, you can get to where you're going relatively quickly. Okay. Now I'm not going to go through this all completely, but when we send the webinar out, uh, you'll get these specs. So I have the full list of specifications in here and just generally would like to point out that we, like I've mentioned before, we have all the same capabilities or more than the old style atomics. So it's going to have the ability to, we're going to have the mass, the electronic mass flow control that's going to allow us to control uh, both nitrogen and helium. Uh, and we're going to be able to control that from anywhere from five mils up to 500. And it's variable through modes uh, from one method to the next, one mode to the next, one schedule line to the next. Uh, gives ultimate flexibility in, that, in how you develop your methods. And again, like I mentioned, three internal standard positions. Uh, has the methanol extraction capabilities. Also, I have not mentioned yet the ability to rinse your liquid pathway with methanol, uh, which should always be followed up with a water rinse. But that can help to really reduce carryover, especially if you have uh, oily or really nasty liquid samples that get pulled through the uh, liquid pathway. We can rinse those out with methanol to really help cut down on that carryover. Uh, so that'll be available when you get the webinar uh, afterward. You can go through those a little more closely. Uh, so just to circle back and let's touch again on the key features of the new Atomics XYZ, uh, the, the XYZ automation. Like I said, it really shrinks that footprint. Uh, the system that we're using is really robust. Uh, in internal testing, we've run 
We've run over 365 full trays without any errors, any type of human intervention being required, and without recalibrating. So that represents over a year's worth of continuous cycle time uh, with, with a normal purge runtime per sample. Uh, so very robust system is proving to be very, very uh, reliable in that manner. And then again, uh, features pulled in from the lumen, the improved moisture control, that's going to help reduce GC maintenance and it's going to improve chromatography, faster cool down rates from that dedicated ducting pulling in air from outside, uh, the new USB connectivity to PCs so you don't have to use converters and dongles and the headaches associated with, with uh, technical disconnects that may happen when that, that uh, converter doesn't work properly and your instrument gets disconnected from the computer. Uh, but then also keeping that U-shaped trap and that electronic mass flow controller that we've used so successfully through so many of our other products and all the great features that come with those. And then that segues me into the advantages of Techmar's purge and trap product line, both legacy products and current products, and that would be our mass flow controller that's been in use for three or four generations of products now uh, and all the features that come with that including the fully automated leak check capability that gives you uh, pressure and we can also look at subsections of the atomics xyz to help isolate down where that leak is occurring uh, the full diagnostics capability through the software benchmark test that is a, a key feature of all of our products and last but not least that proprietary number nine trap that helps reduce water retention while remaining uh, while giving us good recovery on our target compounds for typical environmental methods such as 524 series or 8260. Okay, so that brings us to the end. I want to thank everyone for their for their time and their attention. Uh, before I get to questions here, just point out that our applications team is always here for you. We generate application notes regularly. All of those are available on our website for download for free. So go to www.teledynetechmar.com, uh, navigate to the application notes. We have all of our application notes available there. Uh, you can also get a hold of our customer support and our technical support centers through either our website or by calling our phone number, 1-800-874-2004, excuse me. Uh, so we can help you with any application issues you may be having, any hardware troubleshooting type issues, uh, or if you're just interested in more information about the Atomics XYZ or upgrading to any of our other uh, products, please absolutely feel free to reach out to us.